Good evening. I'm Frank Catalano, and I am not a scientist. However, I love science. When I was growing up, Jacques Cousteau was exploring the ocean. The moonshots were going on, and Star Trek was going into its very first reruns. I turned this love of science into a career. I wrote science fiction for magazines for a short while. Then I was a health science and technology reporter for broadcast radio and television. And now I do technology industry consulting. But I have discovered that science is slowly destroying my childhood memories of science. Let's start with something that we all know about, Pluto. In 2006, the IAU voted to take Pluto and make it into a dwarf planet. And not even the biggest dwarf planet, that went to Eris. It's the second largest dwarf. That was a big problem because Pluto, 80 years ago this year, was discovered. It was a big deal when it was discovered. It had an element, plutonium, named after it. The year it was discovered, it also wound up having a Disney character named after it. But that was pretty much the peak of Pluto's activity. That's as good as Pluto got. In 1931, a year after Pluto was discovered, it was estimated as having the same mass as the Earth. Then, over the years, it kept going downward and downward to by the point it only had the mass of one quarter of one percent of the Earth. And that's one of the many things that led the IAU to vote it to a dwarf planetum, for protests to occur in Seattle and elsewhere, and for the American Dialect Society in 2007 to have its word of the year be Plutoed, meaning to devolve or diminish. <laughs> now, mine is not the first generation to lose a planet. A couple generations earlier, remember Venus was thought to be this beautiful, lush planet with jungles and cloud cover with incessant rain, kind of like Seattle. It led to a lot of science fiction stories being written. That lasted until 1967, when Mariner 5 spacecraft went to Venus and discovered it was indeed hot, but it was dry, and those clouds were sulfuric acid. So, <laughs> Venus itself became Plutoed. Now, science is not just destroying my memory of planets, it's also destroying my memory of dinosaurs. Remember the Brontosaurus? Wasn't that cool? It was vegetarian, it was gentle, it lived in swamps, and it was slow-witted and slow-moving. Well, it turns out it had the wrong name, the wrong head, and the wrong lifestyle. You can blame these two guys. They were back in the 1800s. These two paleontologists had a contest going to see who could find more dinosaurs. The one on the left, Marsh, found something he called the Apatosaurus. Then two years later, he found a much bigger dinosaur that he called the Brontosaurus. He couldn't find a head for the skeleton, though, so he just grabbed something from a nearby dig and slapped it on. It turns out it was not a different dinosaur. It was just a mature Apatosaurus, which he discovered two years earlier. So wrong name, wrong head. Then you have the wrong lifestyle problem. Remember those feet that were supposed to be in swamps? Turns out, not so good in water. Remember the tail that was supposed to be heavy and slow it down? Well, Nathan Mirvold in a computer model in 1997 discovered it could be whipped like a tail and make a 200 decibel cannon crack. So, wrong name, wrong head, wrong lifestyle, and not a brontosaurus. By 1974, the word brontosaurus was struck from the records of paleontology until the Postal Service screwed up and revived it on some stamps in 1989, but that's a different issue entirely. <laughs> now, we, had, we have another issue here with other names. What do we all call this? Starfish, right? No. Go to aquariums and you'll see that name starfish no longer appears. It's a sea star. It's because marine biologists thought that starfish was too confusing and went on a big campaign about five years ago to change it. All right? So, but it turns out sea star is not even a scientific name. Asteroidia is the scientific name. Think about how confusing it would be if we used that. Marine biologists were not done with starfish to sea star. Also, these things behind me, they're called jellies at aquariums now, thanks to marine biologists. And this is just all the stuff that's happening under the sea. Above ground, when I was growing up, I, you know, I loved bears, and I really, really loved koala bears. And boy, was I wrong. Koala bear is a marsupial. It is not a bear. The panda on the right is. One of these things is not like the other, as I said when I was growing up. And it's not the koala. However, so basically what's happened here is science has taken away my planets, my dinosaurs, and my creature names. And, you know, I get really, really upset about this because science has erased my memories of science when I was a kid, except then I remember what science is. Science is not a static body of knowledge. Science is a process, and processes make progress. And when progress occurs, it changes your perceptions, and once your childhood, that really sucks. But you set that aside for a second, it reminds me of why I thought science was so important in the first place. It was perhaps stated best by the guy who discovered Eris, the largest dwarf planet. Science is self-correcting eventually, even when strong emotions are involved. Like mine, 
I just think of it as the past ain't what it used to be. I love science still. Thank you.